Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 19 of Black and Gold Weekly. It's your host, John. I am here again just by myself this week, but there is still plenty, plenty, plenty to talk about in the world of the Boston Bruins, a team that has clinched their spot in the 2021 uh, Stanley Cup playoffs this week with a win over the Devils and is now gearing up for postseason action. Just want to let you guys know that this is probably going to be a shorter episode this week. Um, I've been very, very busy with work, but I still wanted to make sure that I got an episode out for you guys, and I haven't missed a Friday all season long, so you best believe I'm not about to start now. So it might be a little shorter, but there's still a lot to unpack here and a lot to talk about. We're going to be looking at the past week. We're going to be previewing the upcoming week. We're going to be talking about the teams that the Bruins may be playing in the postseason, where they might finish, as well as the Bruins are getting healthier now, and we're seeing just how deep this lineup really is um, now that they have guys back and a f almost fully healthy lineup heading uh, into these last few games. So... Before we get started with everything, I just want to remind everyone that this show is in partnership with Black and Gold Productions, and I want to give a huge thank you to Mark Allred and the entire team at BNG Productions for their support. This show would not be happening without them, and uh, very, very much appreciated all the everything that they do to help uh, promote the show, share it out there on social media, and... Um, get people watching. So big thank you to Mark and everyone at BNG. I also want to point out the links down in the description of the video. Uh, there's three links down there. The top one is for Boston Bruins apparel. The second one is for NHL, any team apparel. And the third one is for NCAA college teams apparel. Uh, great variety of products there. All sorts of stuff. Obviously hats, shirts, sweatshirts, normal stuff like that. All different kinds of accessories, uh, pants, all kinds of stuff. If you're in the market for anything, whether it's Bruins, NHL, or college, check out those links. It would really, really be appreciated. And uh, they have a great selection of stuff for you to choose from. So with that out of the way, I want to get into looking at the past week for the Boston Bruins to start the show as we usually do. And it was a big, big week for the Bruins as they clinched a playoff spot in the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs. They will be going to the postseason, which we all pretty much expected, but now it is official. And uh, they had quite the week. They had five games Thursday to Thursday over the past seven days. And they won four of those five games. And the one that they lost was in overtime and they still got a point out of. So very, very good week for the Boston Bruins. Very impressive week. Obviously, it was against teams that they should be beating. But earlier in the season, the Bruins were not always winning games and beating teams that they should be beating. This week, they got the job done. And Boston continues to play very, very well post-trade deadline. If we go all the way back to last Thursday, which was April 29th, they picked up a 5-2 win over the Buffalo Sabres. Obviously, Buffalo is a team that the Bruins should be beating pretty much every time out. They certainly made sure that they um, took care of business in this one. Three-goal win, 5-2, solid game, played well. Pretty much what you wanted to see. And then on Saturday, May 1st, they came out played an afternoon game against the Buffalo Sabres and absolutely handled them again. This time a 6-2 win for the Boston Bruins. And um, again, you know, exactly what you wanted to see for the most part. Obviously not perfect, but what Boston beating a team like the Sabres by multiple goals is what you want to see night in and night out when they're playing teams like this. And Boston was able to do it both Thursday and Saturday and pick up some big wins over the Sabres that got them closer to a playoff spot. Then they go into Monday's game on May 3rd against the New Jersey Devils with a chance to clinch with any sort of points out of that game. And Boston goes out, gets a 3-0 shutout win over the New Jersey Devils, a team that they've actually struggled with for much of this season. Um, they go out, they shut them out, they get a 3-0 win, they clinch a playoff spot. 
and they secure themselves postseason hockey again this year, uh, which is obviously great to see what all Bruins fans wanted to see. And um, they did a nice job in that game. Man, Scott Wedgwood made some big saves, and the scoring was not coming early in that game. Um, they it was it was very very tight, and it was it was starting to look like one of the games earlier in the season that the Bruins heavily outshot the Devils, but ended up losing one to nothing. And I was almost thinking that that kind of thing was going to happen again. But then Boston finally broke the ice, got the first goal on the board. And once they got that first goal on, you started to feel really good about that game for the Bruins. And obviously they ended up extending the lead, putting it away with a third goal and uh, locking up that W against the Devils on Monday night. They played the Devils again on Tuesday, May 4th, and this was the only game this week that they took home a loss, but it was an overtime loss, so they did get a point out of it, um, but they did lose 4-3 to in OT to New Jersey, and to be honest with you, I am not at all surprised that they lost this game. Um, I'm completely giving them a pass for losing this game for a m- multiple different reasons, but the biggest thing is that for a lot of teams... The first game after clinching a playoff spot is kind of a letdown game most of the time because you take your foot off the gas a little bit. And obviously, it's it's not even a conscious thing. You're not going out there thinking, yo, we're going to lose tonight or we don't need to play hard anymore because we're in the playoffs. That's not what happens. But there is just a natural kind of sigh of relief. The pressure is off. And just you naturally ease up a little bit when you first realize that, okay, we're in the playoffs. We're locked in. We're in good shape. We don't have to stress about that anymore. There's just always, even if it's just a little bit, there's a little bit of a just sigh of relief and an easing off the gas pedal. And a lot of teams lose their first game after clinching a playoff spot because they have to get back and be like, okay. Now we need to focus on the next thing. We need to find that next thing to focus on, that next thing to go all in on and push that pedal to the floor for because it's not the getting to the playoffs anymore. We already did that. And so I I thought the Bruins were probably going to lose this game. The other two reasons that I thought they could was because, A, the Devils have given them trouble all year. So, um, again, obviously they beat them the night before, but the Devils are a team that are not going to just roll over and die and let you win. And they've beaten the Bruins multiple times this season. So it's a tough matchup for Boston. And the other thing is that it was the second game of a back-to-back. Now, I understand it was the second game of a back-to-back for the Devils as well, but New Jersey didn't play very well in that first game. So you were expecting more of a push from the Devils in the second game, and the Bruins were definitely a little bit tired and and looked like it was the second game of a back-to-back. And while it was the same situation for New Jersey, I think, you know, Boston definitely felt it and, and they didn't play as well. And that's going to happen from time to time. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not worried about that loss. I'm giving them a pass for that. I really did expect them to lose that game going in. And it was their only loss of the week. So Boston's still in very, very good shape. The final game of the week came last night on the 6th against the New York Rangers, a 4-0 win, another shutout win for the Bruins. Uh, Rask got the shutout on Monday. Swayman gets a shutout here on Thursday. Um, Obviously, another great performance there for for Swayman, keeping a goose egg on the board. Bruins played well. Um, Obviously, a 4-0 win. They, They controlled most of the game, but this was another one that I'm not surprised at. I'm not surprised that the Bruins handled the Rangers rather easily in this game because this was a huge letdown game for the New York Rangers. Um, obviously, everyone knows this is a Bruins show and it doesn't involve the Bruins, so I'm not going to get heavily into it. But everyone knows what was happening earlier in the week with the New York Rangers and Washington Capitals, the whole Tom Wilson situation. And then you have the firing of your general manager and team president out of almost nowhere. And then you have the game on Wednesday night for the Rangers against the Capitals again, which was a hugely emotionally charged game. Um, Obviously, six fights in the first five minutes, line brawl, going all out, trying to stand up for themselves, 
you know, stand up for their teammate and, and, you know, get some, get some pushback against the Capitals physically for what happened on Monday. And then you have to go out and play the next night against a totally different team. The, with travel, the emotion level, you know, you used all of your energy and, and emotional energy on Wednesday and you have to go out and play again on Thursday. This was just a letdown game for the Rangers. They, they were all charged up on Wednesday, and then just third. By the time Thursday came around for that game, it was just completely nothing left. And Boston took advantage of that, handled the game one four zero, and uh, just controlled the New York Rangers pretty much from start to finish there. So. Um, obviously very, very, very good week for the Boston Bruins. Four out of five games are wins. The only loss came in overtime. Five or four oh and one this week. Clinch a playoff spot, move into third, which I haven't even mentioned yet. They've moved into third in the division. They're not in fourth anymore. Um and they're taking care of business right now. Boston has looked very, very good since the trade deadline. They continue to look very, very good. And they're hot. They're a hot team going into the playoffs. And that is really, really what you want to see as a Bruins fan. And really exciting as a Bruins fan. Because if you asked me a month ago, where I, I would have been picking the Bruins for an easy first round exit. And now... I'm, I'm, I'm not. I, I mean, I think they have a chance to beat almost anybody that they're going to be playing and probably and they have a chance to beat anybody that they're going to be playing. And this team could go very deep into the playoffs with the way that they are playing right now. I hope they keep it up in the playoffs um, because at the level they're at right now, this, ha this is a team that could make a run. They have the ability to. It's just about execution and bringing it on a nightly basis. But so far to end the regular season post-trade deadline, they've been doing it. And I've been really, really happy with that. So um, obviously another good week here for Boston. And uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about the playoff race. and Not, not the race necessarily, but the teams at Boston um could potentially match up with in the playoffs this year in the first round they are in third now if the season ended right now they'd be playing the washington capitals which again i think that'd be a war of a series but it'd certainly be a hell of a lot of fun to watch and i'm certainly wouldn't be opposed to it and i think the boston bruins could win that series certainly so um we're gonna move on to that now and take a look here at the standings in the East Division, where they sit right now. In first place, you have the Pittsburgh Penguins with 75 points. In second place, you have the Washington Capitals with 73 points. In third place, you have the Boston Bruins with 71 points. And down in fourth now, really struggling recently, the New York Islanders with 68 points. They have dropped to fourth. Boston has passed them. The Islanders are only 4-4-2 four, four, and two in their last 10 games, and they are not playing very well here recently. So um, with the way that the standings are right now, with only a few games left or a couple games, depending on the teams, um, that, uh, you know, Boston is unlikely, I think, to drop back to fourth place. Um, I think they would need to lose... They would, they would need to lose all of their remaining games and the Islanders would need to win both of their remaining games, which one is against Boston. So that would include a game against the Bruins. So the Islanders would have to win out and the Bruins would have to lose out for the Bruins to drop back to fourth. I don't think that's going to happen because I think the Bruins win against, against the Rangers again on Saturday. So I don't think Boston's dropping back to fourth. Now, I don't think they're going to first either because for them to go to first, they would need to win out. Pittsburgh would have to lose their last game, which I believe is against Buffalo. So what are the chances of that? Um, and they'd also have to pass the Capitals who have the same number of games left as them, but are two points ahead. Now the Bruins do play the Capitals head to head for their last game of the season on Tuesday night, May 11th. So, um, it's not mathematically impossible for the Bruins to move into first. They would have to win out. Pittsburgh would have to lose their last game and the Capitals would only be able to win one of their remaining games for the Bruins to move into first place. I think it's highly unlikely. So 
we're looking at Boston here finishing in second or third. Where, which of those they're going to finish, that remains to be seen. That's completely up for grabs. But they're likely to finish second or third in the division. The Capitals could win the division. The Penguins could win the division. The Bruins still may, could, but although I don't think they're going to. They could. Whoever wins the division is going to play the New York Islanders. So let's say the Pittsburgh Penguins win the division, then the Bruins are going to be playing the Washington Capitals in the first round of the playoffs. How do the Boston Bruins match up against the Washington Capitals? Well, they've played the Caps pretty well this season. Braden Holtby is gone, and Holtby was kind of a curse for the Bruins. They could never beat the Caps when Holtby was in Washington. Holtby's obviously gone this year, and their season series against the Capitals has looked very, very different. Boston's actually um, won a lot of games against the Capitals this year. Washington's a beatable team. Um, that would be a war of a series, though. And that would, I would love to see the Bruins, from an entertainment standpoint, I would love to see the Bruins play the Capitals in the first round. That would be a series that I would watch every second of and enjoy watching every second of. Whoever comes out of that series, though, is going to be, be beaten up. And going beyond that series is going to be difficult for whoever comes out of it just because of the physical toll that a series against the Washington Capitals would take. So um, that would scare me a little bit for the chances of the Bruins going deep, deep into the playoffs. But I do think they could beat the Capitals in the first round. And I think it would be a really fun series to watch. It would certainly be big boy hockey, my kind of game. And uh, you'd, you'd have a lot of physicality in that one without a doubt. So... Um, as far as that goes, I mean, I would love to see the series against the Caps. Um, I, I think it'd be a lot of fun to watch. I think the Bruins could win that series. The other thing is that Washington has not won a playoff series since they won the Stanley Cup in 2018. 2019, they got knocked out in the first round by the Carolina Hurricanes. And then last year, they got knocked out by the New York Islanders. So, uh, it's been a while since the Capitals have won a playoff series. Now, the Capitals are a very good team, a very tough team, but they do have some question marks, including Alexander Ovechkin's health right now. He's not playing right now because of injury. Uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov was late to, he got healthy scratch for being late. Then I think he ended up on the COVID list again. I, I just, there's, there's things going on with this Capitals team that don't, look great going into the postseason. And the other thing is that as well as Vitek Vanacek and Ilya Samsonov have played this season, they're both very, very young goaltenders. And they both will be playing their first, you know, first playoff action at the NHL level when the Capitals, whoever they play in the first round this year. So they have, they're extremely inexperienced in goal, where Boston has Tuka Rask, who's obviously won a lot of playoff games and has gone on deep runs before. So uh, there are some things that I think would be advantage Boston there against the Capitals. And I think that, you know, that'd be a, a really good series when the Bruins certainly would have a chance to win it. The other team that it, the Bruins could potentially play is the Pittsburgh Penguins. And for this to happen, or likely to happen, Pittsburgh would have to drop down to second, which uh, probably isn't going to happen. I think Pittsburgh ends up winning. I think we do see Bruins and Caps in the first round. But if Boston does play Pittsburgh, the Penguins are another team that the Boston Bruins have had success against this season. They've won a good number of games against the Penguins this season. And they've shown that they can beat the, that they can beat the Penguins, and they have beaten the Penguins. So as well as Pittsburgh has played this year, and they've ended up being so much better this year than I thought they were going to be, and they never seem to fail. It doesn't matter what the lineup looks like, who leaves, as long as Crosby's there, this team is good. And uh, after a very shaky start, Tristan Jarry's played a lot better, really from March on, and. Um, Casey DeSmith as well is an uh, he had a better start than has been playing lately but Jerry's taken over and Jerry's played pretty well. So I think we know Pittsburgh's goaltending situation. Now again, Tristan Jerry hasn't exactly played a lot in the playoffs or 
Has he even played at all in the NHL playoffs? I don't think so, except maybe in relief duty at some point. So, again, you're looking, you're taking a very inexperienced goaltender into the playoffs as your starter for the first time in the pit, with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be a problem. We've seen young goaltenders play very well in the postseason, including a Pittsburgh Penguin goaltender named Matt Murray, who won the Stanley Cup in his first and second seasons in the NHL. So just because Jerry doesn't have playoff experience doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing for Pittsburgh. However, it is kind of, you know, it is something to think about. It is a question mark with the Penguins. The Penguins' defense is also a question mark in my mind. We know they can score goals. They can score goals with anybody in the league. But that defense has had a lot of games this year where they just have not looked good and where they've given up a you know four or five goals. And if you do that in the playoffs, you're going to be out fairly quickly. The other thing with Pittsburgh is that they haven't won a playoff series since 2018 either. In 2019, they got swept out in the first round by the New York Islanders when Pittsburgh was the ex- team expected to win there. And then Last season, they didn't even get out of the qualifying round. They got upset in the qualifying round by the Montreal Canadiens, who were a 12 seed and were like the last team to get in. So um, Pittsburgh's recent playoff history isn't exactly great either, similar to Washington's. So there's definitely um, there's definitely a chance there that even if Pittsburgh is the higher seed that the Boston Bruins could beat the Pittsburgh Penguins because they've done it multiple times this season. Again, I think it would be a very, very good series. I think it would be less physically demanding of a series than playing the Washington Capitals. Um, I don't think you'd have the same level of hitting and just physicality and after the whistle stuff. Pittsburgh doesn't really play that game the way that the Capitals do. Um, but And I think either team could win it. Just like the Bruins versus Washington, I think either team could win it. And quite frankly, with all of these teams in the East, I think that any team can come out of the East. Out of the four teams that made it, Pittsburgh, Washington, Boston, and the Islanders, I think any team could come out of the East. And it's a realistic possibility of happening. So it's going to be a really, really fun postseason. It's going to be a really, really fun playoffs. Um Obviously, I'm just kind of focusing on the first round right now because that's what we know is coming up. And you got to get past the first round to even start thinking about beyond that. But uh, the Bruins are likely to play the Washington Capitals, could maybe play the Pittsburgh Penguins. And if things really changed in the last couple of games, maybe the New York Islanders, but that's highly unlikely. It's most likely either going to be the Pens or the Caps. I think it's going to be the Caps. The Bruins are likely to finish second or third in the division. And uh, we're going to be having a big time first round series in the playoffs, to say the least. And I'm super excited for it as the Bruins season is coming to a close. Things just ramp up even more as we get towards the playoffs and The intensity level will be skyrocketing as the playoffs begin, without a doubt. So, just wanted to take a look at the standings there and kind of go through who the Bruins might be playing now that they are locked in to a playoff spot and uh, and getting ready for postseason action. So, another thing I wanted to talk about kind of quickly here is the health of the Boston Bruins and how deep they are now that we have guys back. Brandon Carlo's come back. Even Andre Kasha, who's only played two games this season, is back practicing with a regular jersey on. And uh, is that, you know, does he get into a game or not before the end of the season? We'll see. Pro- maybe not, but he's back practicing in full capacity, which is really, really important. And we're starting to see now with, with Hall on that second line. And with that second line starting to play significantly better than they have at any point in recent history, um, we're, we're, we're really starting to see that the Bruins are a deep team. And they've got a defense now with Carlo back, with, you know, Grizzlick, McAvoy, Riley, and Carlo as their top four. And then they've got, you know, Clifton and Miller, Lausanne, Zaborl, all these guys down. Uh, as depth guys to fill out your bottom two. And then they've got two good players who will be healthy scratched and will be your extra defensemen like Connor Clifton, most likely. Um, 
and uh, I would say probably Zaboral. I think you'd go with Miller and Lausanne on your bottom pair. That's who I would go with. And then you don't. You've got Tenorti too. You've got Campfer if you need a call up. I mean, they're so deep on the back end. They've got ten guys on defense that could play playoff games or that could be in your lineup for the postseason. So. Um, their top four is set now with Carlo back, and with that bottom pair is going to be based on who is playing well and who deserves to be there. And then you're going to have a whole bunch of extra guys there that could fill into a line in the lineup if someone gets hurt or if somebody starts to you know turn the puck over and play poorly. You have guys that you can fill in there. So they're extremely deep on defense now. Um, I mean, Rask and Swayman, I think, are your goaltending tandem. Sway, there, you cannot just like send Swayman back now. Like Swayman has been your second. You know, Rask is obviously the number one. Swayman's your number two now at this point. Halak, I'm sorry. Halak has not had a good season this year. You've been beaten out. And then they've got Vladar as well if they really got into a pinch. So they really have four goaltenders that could play NHL games. Really two that I would want playing in Rask and Swayman, but two guys that are certainly suitable backups in Halak and Vladar. They've got 10 defensemen that they can use. And with, you know, if I even when Kosh is healthy, I don't think he cracks the lineup unless somebody gives the, you know, starts to play poorly and gives Bruce a reason to take them out of the lineup. I don't think Kosh is just going to come back and immediately get inserted into that lineup when he's healthy. Um, you're not touching the top six at this point. You've got Pasta, Bergeron, and Marshy. You've got Hall, Krejci, and Smith. Those two lines have been absolutely phenomenal since the trade deadline. Absolutely phenomenal. So you're not going to touch your top six. You can tinker around with the third line if you want, but Coyle's actually been playing better on the wing. So if you're going to move him back to center, you're probably going to lose the effectiveness of Charlie Coyle, who's looked a lot better playing on the wing, at least recently. Um, where's Kasha going to go? If you do put him in the lineup, where's he going to go? You don't want him on the fourth line because he doesn't play that style of game. He's not physical. He's had major concussion issues throughout his career. So, A, he doesn't want to be out there throwing big hits. And, B, he doesn't want to be out there taking big hits. So, he's not going to play that fourth-line physical style of game, and certainly not in the playoffs. I don't even think Kasha goes back into the lineup, to be honest with you, even when he's healthy. Unless you move tinker with the third line and move him somewhere onto the third line, I don't think he plays. Unless you need him to because of an injury or somebody playing really bad that you're going to healthy scratch and pull out as far as a forward goes, I don't think you're putting Kasha in that lineup. I think your third line, uh, you're probably going Coil, Corralian, DeBrusque, and even where does that put Richie? And I think Richie's had a really good season this year. I don't. Do you put Richie on the fourth line? I mean, he he can play that way for sure, but I think he almost deserves to play on the third just because of how he's played this season. I know he got off to a really hot start and he hasn't been at the same level since, but he's still played well. He hasn't been at the same level as he started the entire season, but he's still played well. The goals haven't been coming in bunches the way that they were early in the year, but when you look at his total game and his total numbers, he's been fine. I have no complaints about Nick Ritchie this season. Um, he could play on your third or, or fourth line. If he's on the third line, then DeBrusque is down on the fourth line, which he, he doesn't strike me as a fourth line type of player, but he's had such a bad season that... You might be better off burying him there. But anyway, the, the point is, is that no matter how you finagle this lineup, you're going to have good players who are healthy scratched. You're, you're going to have good players who are healthy scratched, who are extra guys in the postseason. And again, the depth of the Boston Bruins is showing. And now that they are healthy and that they are relatively healthy and they've got these guys back into the lineup, you have an extra two or three forwards that you can easily plug in and not really see much of a drop-off. You have 10 defensemen now that you can pick from to, to you know, whatever six you want to play. And obviously, the top four is set, but as far as that bottom pair, you've got another, you know, you've, you've got five, six guys to pick from. 
for your bottom pair guys, and obviously someone like Camphor is only an extra. Tenorti at this point is only an extra. But you really have four guys to choose two lineup spots from with Clifton, Zaboro, Lausanne, and Miller. And again, I personally, my third pair, at least to start the playoffs, would be Miller and Lausanne. But, you know, if you need to make a change there, you have options. Um, and then in goal, you have four goaltenders now that you know can at least play NHL games. You have four goalies that can play NHL games. So Boston's depth is looking really, really good going into the playoffs here. Um, and hopefully they can stay healthy because that's been an issue all season. The injuries have been an issue all season. And um, we're just really starting to see a healthy Bruins team again. So hopefully it stays that way. Um, but I have a feeling that you're probably, especially if we play the Capitals in the first round, you're probably going to have a guy or two succumb to the injury bug in a series like that. But the Bruins have the depth to overcome it, and now they they have the top quality of, of high-end talent and with the way that the top six has been playing now to overcome it as well. So um, I like where Boston is set up going into the playoffs this year. I really, really do. And uh, again, I think it's going to be a dogfight no matter who they play. I think the East is extremely competitive this year and going to be very difficult to come out of. But I think Boston has as good a chance as anybody. I think all four teams in the East have a chance to win that division and make it to the Final Four. And I, I think the Bruins are right there with as good a chance as anybody or a good a chance to lose as anybody else because all of those teams seem so evenly matched. So, uh that's a playoff picture, who the Bruins might play. The injury situation is getting a lot better. I want to talk about the upcoming games for the Bruins now, which actually are the final three games of the regular season. So Boston's upcoming schedule, their week ahead, closes out the regular season for the Bruins. They play tomorrow, which is Saturday, May 8th, against the New York Rangers at home. They have a day off on Sunday, and then they close out the season with a back-to-back -back Monday and Tuesday. Monday is at home against the New York Islanders on May 10th. And then Tuesday, the final game of the regular season is at Washington on May 11th. And again, we don't know what, you know, things in the standings might be solidified by that last game potentially. And we don't know who's going to be in the lineup and who would be given rest for that last game. Um, obviously, if that game isn't meaningful, uh, especially in the second half of a back-to-back, -back, I don't think you're really playing any of your big players in that game if you're the Bruins. Um, I, I, I wouldn't be if I was the coach, that's for sure. But if that game does mean something, you might have to if it can move you up in, in the standings or something like that. So we don't know exactly what the magnitude of that game is going to be like or who's even going to be in the lineup on either side. But um, I think the Bruins should beat the Rangers on Saturday. Um, I'm actually going to talk about that in uh, the final segment of the show. But the Bruins should beat the Rangers on Saturday. Uh, on Monday against the Islanders, again, we're getting down to the point where we don't know who's going to be in the lineup or, or you know, how hard they're going to be pushing for points in those games at the end. Um, but I think that should be a good game. The Bruins certainly could win it because the Islanders have not been playing well recently. Um, but the Islanders are always a tough team for the Bruins uh, and have been all year long. So that should be a good game. And then Tuesday the 11th, I have no idea what's going to happen with that one just because that could be a completely meaningless game where they just go through the motions and end the season. Or that could be for second place in the division or first place in the division or something like that. And uh, it could end up being a huge game. So it's a little early to tell on that, but... Um, Obviously, just three games left. It's the end of the year. Boston, at this point, is gearing up for the playoffs. They Everything that they are doing is good is to bring good habits into the postseason, be playing well into the postseason. You want to get some of your veteran guys rested over these last three games. You want to make sure that you know they're healthy. If anyone has a nagging injury, I'm pretty much not playing them at this point. Um, I'm trying to get them healthy for the postseason. I'm probably giving guys like Bergeron and Marshand and Krejci a one of these three games off. Um, I'm probably only playing Tuca, 
Saturday, maybe again on Monday, and then let a backup take Tuesday. Or maybe Tuca just plays Saturday and then goes into playoff mode and gets ready for the postseason. That could be a possibility as well. Um, I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, it's certainly you're going to see some end of the year decisions made here. And it's going to feel like the end of the year, I think, as the Bruins now their focus has shifted to being ready for the playoffs, gearing up for the playoffs and trying to make a run in the postseason. And, um, you know, just just being ready for that. And I don't think they're overly worried about, you know, whether they finish second, third or where. Obviously, you want to win as many of these games as you can. Like nobody goes out and wants to lose. But I think that the focus now is shifted towards being ready for the postseason more so than this being a must win game or we have to climb to second in the standings here. Listen, they're probably playing the Capitals in the first round. They're probably finishing second or third. And it's going to be a tough series whether they have home ice or not in it. Obviously, home ice would be nice, but it doesn't guarantee anything. I mean, the Bruins lost Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals on home ice in 2019. So um, I, I think their focus now is just more on being ready for the postseason. So that is the week ahead for the Bruins. And that is the final three games of the regular season as Boston's year finishes up on May 11th. Well, their regular season year finishes up on May 11th. And then we don't know when the playoffs are exactly going to start yet because of all the playoff game or the, not the playoff, the uh, makeup games be, that teams miss because of COVID and stuff like that. So we don't exactly know how long of a layoff it's going to be between the end of the regular season and the start of the postseason. But um, the Bruins are going to have a gap there before they start postseason play. So uh, we're going to have to see how long that is. But that is the week ahead for the Bruins. And finally, uh, one last segment of this show, obviously Bruins bet of the week, which, of course, I got wrong again last week. The Saturday game against Buffalo was not an under. Um, it was actually well over with eight goals in that game. So I was totally wrong on that. But... This uh, this week's Bruins bet of the week uh, for me going into the last few games like this is that the Bruins are going to beat the New York Rangers on Saturday. Just Bruins money line to win the game over the Rangers on Saturday. Um, New York's lost five in a row now, I think. They haven't been playing well. They've had all this turmoil going on around the team and the organization. The Bruins should be able to handle things against the Rangers. They should win on Saturday. And, um, that, that's my, uh, I mean, there's, it's not like there's a ton to choose from with only three games left, but that would be my bet of the week this week is that the Bruins are going to win the game over the Rangers on Saturday. So that is Bruins bet of the week. We'll see if I can finally get back on the right track and at least get this one right, hopefully. Um, and that is going to bring us towards the end or to the end of episode 19 here again. Thank you guys all so much for watching really really appreciate that a big thank you to mark Allred and the entire team at black and gold productions uh their support has been phenomenal and the show would not be happening without them don't forget to please check out the links down in the description that i talked about at the beginning nhl gear uh boston bruins gear ncaa college gear it's all there if you're in the market for any of that stuff please click those links and take take a look it really really helps out a lot and is greatly appreciated that is going to do it for episode 19. By next week, episode 20, I should have a guest back on, and we're going to be talking about the playoffs, like just previewing the playoffs and talking about the playoffs. And it's going to be playoffs, 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 because Boston will be heading into the playoffs at that point. Um, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a big postseason for the Bruins as they look to make a run this this year. So. Uh, that's going to do it. Thank you guys all again so much. Episode 20 will be out next Friday. And with that, uh, thank you and talk to you soon.